Sonia here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today we are making this zipper pouch. So it has a crochet outside and a fabric lining with a zipper and a tassel. I really, really love it. It is such a practical item to have and with the fabric lining of course it means that you're not going to lose anything in the holes of the crochet and it is such a good size to put i don't know you know your crochet hooks but also makeup um anything that you need to take when you're traveling for instance or even just in your handbags sunglasses uh or all the things that you need these days chargers um you know <laughs> face masks you know, all kinds of things. So keep things together that you need to keep together. I love the way this has turned out and I am really pleased with my color choices. So let's get started. So what do you need for this project? Well, I made 12 mini granny squares. So they're just normal granny squares and there's three rows in each. As you can see, I made them in a selection of colors. I each time started with white and then just, you know, took any color that took my fancy. And now I'm planning on crocheting them together with this lavender color because I was planning on doing it with white, but I'm just checking my stash. I have hardly any left. <laughs> so I'm going to do it with um, that lavender color. So you need some sort of crochet outer for your pouch. And I've decided I wanted to make the granny cluster squares, the granny look. Um, and then, of course, now that I've made these, I have an idea of how big my pouch is going to be. So then I have a zipper that's about the same length as the, the width of my pouch. And then here... I have two pieces of fabric, which again are about that size of my pouch. So this fabric here, these two pieces are going to be my inner lining. So in a moment, I'm going to create an inner lining attached to the zip with my sewing machine. And that's the shadow you can see <laughs> right there. Um, and then I'm going to show you how we're going to crochet these bits together, how we're making the outside and then putting it together uh, with here um, my uh, needle and thread. Now I have got my sewing machine ready for doing the zipper and the inner lining. You can also do that by hand. It will take a bit longer, but it is doable and it is manageable. I have to admit, I am not someone who likes doing that uh, sewing by hand. I'm not very good at it, nor <laughs> patient enough, but I might end up uh, cr um, sewing the crochet on with my sewing machine as well. So I will keep you posted on that. So what else you need? Of course, you need your crochet hook for doing the squares. Also those squares. I have got quite a few videos of granny squares, so I'm not going to show you in this video. So you'll have to go and find a, a granny a square video but maybe you already have a little selection that you made for some sort of other project that you know not making and that's what I'm doing as well because I made this for something else can't remember what it was and I thought now a pouch would be lovely scissors and of course your darning needle to darn in your ends of your crochet uh, yarn but also like I showed you here you need your thinner needle for the sewing bit um, for the reference of the cotton that I used here, it is one of my favourite cottons. It's King Cole Cotton Soft. It's 100% cotton. They have a really nice range and it's good value for money. Okay, so I have my two pieces of fabric. I have my zip and I also have a zipper foot. So I have to change the standard foot of my sewing machine with the zipper foot there we go okay and now i am going to take the zip you turn it over 
it down. And then you take one piece of the lining and you turn that over as well. And you're going to line it up with the top of your zip. Make sure you sort of working with both ends sort of sticking out the same amount. Then best to use some pins to just hold it in place. I'm going to put the pins on the other side of the zip where I am not sewing for the moment. Just sort of lower down to help keep everything in place. And make sure you line up the top of the fabric with the top of the zip there. There we go. That's just done a quick. And now I'm going to open my zip so I can get started sewing here. And then when I'm past there, I'm going to close it up again. So the actual zipper bit is not in the way. Of course, now that's come undone, but yeah, that's better. There we go. I've threaded some nice color sewing thread onto my machine and let's get going. So I'm nearing the part where my zipper is located. So now I'm just going to pull that up pull it past out of the way and then set everything down again and off we go again So now we have attached one part of the zipper to the lining and I'm going to remove the pins. So now we're going to do the same thing for the other side of our lining. So we have our zipper down, we have our lining facing the wrong side up, then pin it. and sew it and now we have two pieces of fabric with the zip on the good side on the bad side of the fabric and the inside of the zip on the good side of the fabric and so now we're going to make the inner bag so again pin it I'm going to change the foot and I am going to so the three sides there we go and now we have made our inner lining okay so let's get started on crocheting the granny squares together so i have the lavender here i'm going to make a slip knot insert the hook and getting started in the corner spaces, I'm just going to go in and in and do a single crochet. Then I am going to single crochet and I'm going to pick up the inner V. So that means the V on this side, on this square, the back V. And on here, the strand of the V that is closest to me. So in a way, also the back because it's now facing away from me. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to crochet just straight lines. So now I'm doing the horizontal over the six squares. So like so. And then I'm doing two vertical ones. So make sure you're stitches tally up just checking to see
show you. So this would be sort of the last stitch in the corner. Then I tend to do one just like before into the corner chain space. Then I do a chain and then I go to the next two squares and do in the corner chain space there. Again, a single crochet just like this. And then again, I start picking them up, making sure that I am tallying up my stitches. And still using the inner loops of the Vs that are on top. So I'm just working my way through the six squares, cut off your yarn and that's where we're at right now. So now I'm going to do the vertical lines. So it's the same thing again really, start in the corner chain space, do your single crochets in the inner loops and then when you cross the line where you have already crocheted you just do a chain and you move on to the next squares. I have now crocheted my six squares together. I have not cut off the last one because this is where we're going to start our row of double crochets going round the square or round the rectangle rather. But remember, you've got to sew in the ends. So let me just show you how to get started. So this was the last row I crocheted together. Then I'm just going to do two chains. This will be my double crochet, my first one. And then into the chain spaces, I'm going to do a double crochet. And then I'm going to pick up the back loops of the Vs around the edge of the rectangle. And I'm going to do double crochets in each stitch, like so. So then when you get to a corner, you go into the chain space again. And with a granny cluster square, you do three double crochets, two chains and three double crochets all in that same corner chain space. And that's exactly what I am going to do here now as well, because it makes sense just to you know do the same thing. And then you start doing your back loop double crochets again. And of course, when you meet the location where there are two chain spaces next to each other, I put one double crochet in the chain space, one double crochet sort of into that single crochet row that we've just put on top, and then another double crochet into the chain space. And then you continue working in the back loop only. So I will meet you when you have worked your way all the way around and your piece of work should look like this. And I have finished my second one. So I'm just doing my slip stitch here. So we're skipping the chain that we did and you go under the V of that first double crochet you did and you do a slip stitch and there you go. So that's closed the round. So now I have, of course, two panels. And they're about the same size as my lining. Look at that. So that's fine. Okay. So this is what it's going to <laughs> be looking like. <laughs> so now we're going to crochet together three sides of our two um, rectangles here. So I'm going to put both of them with the good sides on the outside, the bad sides on the inside. And once again, make your slip knot 
and we're going to single crochet in the inner loops. So starting in the corner, in the corner, you do a single crochet just like this. And then you're going to be picking up the inner loops just like we did before. Actually, I might do a second single crochet here because that was a bit um, difficult to get into that first one there. There we go. And now we're picking up. And then we're doing the three sides, of course. So this is what it looks like at the moment. I've now made it to the corner and yeah, you just have to see what makes a nice corner. Sometimes, you know, sort of two single crochets, one chain and two single crochets. That's a nice corner. See, look, that's perfect. See, and I will see you when you have done your three sides. So I've just made it to the end here and I'm going to do two single crochets just the way we started. So there we go. I'm just going to cut off the arm, pull this through. And now, of course, we are ready to insert the lining. So we've made this and of course, we're going to have to sew these two in there. But just for now, just to check to see that it all fits, I'm going to slide in the lining. Just try and sort of line up your lining nicely, you know, open up your hand here. I've got fingers here, I've got fingers there. Just line it up nicely so it's all in position and then just pin it into place and then do whatever you want to do either you sew it by hand or i am going to attempt um you know doing this by machine <laughs> as usual what did you expect <laughs> okay so I'm going to get started on this side, just past the zipper. It's all the way to the end. And I'll just do that by hand because you have to have your zipper open, of course, to just sew one side. And so um, I don't want to sort of risk having the zipper too close to my sewing needle there. So I'm just going to get started with the zipper foot on it. And I just go and put my put it down sort of just past the zipper so the zipper is just behind there and that should work okay so I've pinned quite a lot of pins just to make sure that the crochet stays in place because it does expand when you're sewing on it like this And I think this is as far as it will go here. So I'm taking it out. I've sewn all the way around. There we go. So just a little test to see that it indeed does zip and zip open. <laughs> and so now here, I am just going to do that by hand because obviously there was no way I was going to get the machine to go in those locations there. And here you have it. So all I need to make now is a tassel. 
I tied the tassel on with the two strings at the top to the hole in the zipper. And here we have it. Look at that. My finished zipped crochet pouch with tassel. Oh my goodness. I love it so much. I really, really think it worked out really well with the green and the purple and then the green zip and then the lavender of the King Cole cotton. Oh my goodness. Yes, I really, really love this pouch. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.